So I'm going to be doing a mixing and mastering tutorial for you guys today. A lot of you guys have been asking for it, so here it is. A couple things to get out of the way before I start is that everybody mixes differently. There's no right or wrong way to do it. There's no one size fits all method, so don't stress out about it if your mixes aren't sounding the way that you want them to, especially if you just started. Uh, just keep at it every day or as often as you can and your mixes will get better with time. There are a lot of people on YouTube who overcomplicate the mixing process for beats. It's just a beat, so it doesn't have to be all complicated. It basically just needs to be as loud and clear as possible because even if the beat ends up being used, the artist will probably have the entire track mixed anyways. Lastly, I would just like to add that I'm not an audio engineer. I don't do this stuff professionally, but I have been making and mixing beats long enough to where I know what I'm doing. So this is what I have going on right now. This is a completely unmixed beat. So the first thing you want to do is pull down the volume on every track and pull up the mixer. And you're going to want to start EQing everything by pulling out all the lows from the melodies up to about 200. Just kind of whatever sounds right. So I'm going to start doing this right now for all the melodies. The purpose of this is to make room for the bass or the 808 so the lower frequencies don't clash. You want all the melodies together to be about minus 20 dB on the master. Doesn't need to be exactly that, but just anything around there is good. Okay, so that's it for melodies. Now I'm going to be bringing up the drums. Just something to keep in mind, you do want your drums to be louder than the melody, at least if you're going for like a mainstream kind of beat. I like the drums to, be, to sit on top of the melodies, but you know, just do whatever you want. I do like to cut off quite a bit of the low ends for the 808. This is just because if you do this, then you can bring up a little bit of the low mids, and this will kind of give the illusion that 
the 808s louder. You can also push it a little bit louder without distorting the whole beat. You don't have to do this, this is just the way that I like to mix my 808s. All right, so now I'm gonna be side chaining the kick to the 808. I'm not gonna go super in depth, but I will show you how to do it. Uh, basically, you're just gonna go into the next available bus and open up a compressor, and then to the right where it says sidechain, just choose the kick. Uh, I don't really wanna explain these settings, but this is kinda how I do it. I will leave a video in the description on how to sidechain in Logic, so I suggest go watching that if you don't know how to do it. Basically all it's doing is whenever the kick drum hits, it reduces the volume of the 808 and it just makes everything sound a little bit louder and more clear. So now I'm gonna be adding effects into all the channels. I'm gonna start with the melodies. Uh, this part's totally optional. I'm just adding a exciter from Waves just to kind of brighten up the melodies a little bit. Now I'm gonna be adding in some reverb through a bus for the cymbals. Once again, all these effects are totally optional. You don't have to use any of these. You can also just use the stock plugins. I just have a bunch of wave stuff, so I like using that instead. I'm also gonna be adding in some distortion into the 808 through a bus. I'm just gonna be using Camel Crusher. It's a free distortion VST. And I'm just gonna be giving it a little bit of distortion through the bus, not a whole lot. So when you are adding distortion to something that's side-chained, you need to add it through the original effects auxiliary track. Otherwise, the signal from the effect won't be getting side-chained if that makes any sense. So that's it for the mixing part of this. Uh, so now we're gonna be moving on to the mastering part. Just to be clear, this isn't like an actual master. Um, and that's totally fine. It doesn't need to be professionally mastered because it is just a beat. Um, it'll probably get mastered if the beats ends up getting used anyways. So what this is doing is basically just making it commercial level. This will make it sound professional and just kind of good enough to throw up on YouTube or SoundCloud or whatever and give it a listen. So the first thing you want to do is give it a high pass filter only to about you know, like 23 hertz, something like that. This will just cut off those super deep lows that you're not gonna hear anyways, so that could, you know, muddy up your track. Um, you're just better off without them. Then the next thing I'm gonna be doing is opening up this tube saturator from Waves, and I like this uh, Warm A Mix preset. Uh, once again, totally optional. I just like how this sounds. You can use a regular exciter if you want, but I'm gonna go for that and then you're going to open up a compressor and just kind of mess around with the settings. You really just kind of want to give it minimal compression, nothing too crazy. Um, I like to get it just kind of compressed to like the first or second tick right there. So just kind of barely noticeable. like an automatic mastering so it's pretty easy to use I just like using this thing definitely recommend getting it and I'm just gonna go through the automatic assistant mastering thing 
one thing I don't like about this is it automatically makes the output ceiling negative 1 dB, which you never want. You should put it at like negative 0.01 or 0.02. And I'm just going to be messing around with the other settings in here a little bit. So if you don't have this plugin, which you probably don't since you're watching this video, just use the stock adaptive limiter that's already inside Logic and then put the out ceiling at negative 0.1 or 0.2, doesn't really matter. And then bring the threshold up to just like whatever volume is appropriate. Then I'm gonna be checking it with this loudness meter and it's about negative 11, 12. That's pretty good. Spotify uses negative 13, I think. I just like to make sure it's a little bit louder than that. Uh, just because, you know, the louder the beat is, typically the more impactful it is. So that's really it. Um, you know, thanks so much for watching and hopefully you learned something.